welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we shine a spotlight on the heartbeat of our economy, small and medium-sized enterprises. This is your host, SK. In every episode, we center our discussions around a crucial aspect of our communities, underlining the pivotal role of SMEs. These enterprises not only drive economic growth, but also foster community spirit, innovation, and resilience. Today, we delve into the vibrant world of entrepreneurship and innovation, exploring the impact of incubators and accelerators, the power of women entrepreneurs and black entrepreneurship, and the unique ecosystem of York region. Without further ado, let's embark on this insightful journey. Joining us today is David Kwok, a luminary in the innovation system and a champion of pioneering growth. Holding a Bachelor of Commerce with a major in Entrepreneurship and Marketing from Toronto Metropolitan University. David has a vital force in the innovation landscape since 2013. As a Director of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Yspace, David has significantly expanded its impact, raising over 13 million in funding since 2017. As a founder of Yspace, York University's first physical incubator and Ontario's pioneering food and beverage accelerator, he has been instrumental in supporting businesses in scaling and development. Under his leadership, initiatives like ELA, a national women accelerator program, and the Black Entrepreneurship Alliance have flourished, showcasing his dedication to fostering underrepresented founders. Join us as we dive into the enterprising ecosystem with David and uncover the secrets to successful incubation and acceleration. Uh, good afternoon, David. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you doing today? Not bad. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here. David, your path from a passionate entrepreneur to a leader in fostering innovation ecosystems is both inspiring and instructive. Uh, could you share with our audience the beginnings of your uh, journey and what inspired you to transition into supporting other entrepreneurs through Yspace? Yeah, no, absolutely great question. Yeah, so before my time at Yspace, I spent some time at the DMZ. So I went to TMU, graduated from there, and I spent a lot of time at the DMZ supporting their small businesses from member development to business development, worked there as a student. So really got a passion for entrepreneurship there and how do we support our, our founders there. And then coming out of university, I actually started my own company called Zero to Startup. So not only have I gotten a chance to support founders, but also be a founder myself, go through the process, the journey, the the mental side of things was the, the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So taking all of that coming back, it was really an opportunity for me to look at entrepreneurship a little bit differently from an, a standpoint of being a founder. How do I make it more accessible for different entrepreneurs? How do I incorporate things that I'm hearing from founders? And I think really being at the core root of that, building out Wisebase with accessibility at the core mission of it, um, not only to you know, our, our tech founders, but also our food and beverage, our women entrepreneurs, our black entrepreneurs, our rural entrepreneurs, and really making it as simple as we can make it so that most people can benefit from the program. Okay. And reflecting on your transition, like what were some of the key lessons you have uh, learned as an entrepreneur that have shaped your approach to mentoring and supporting startups uh, at Yspace? Yeah, great question. Again, I think I think a couple of different things there. Um, the first one I'll say is really mental health. That was a big one. When I was going through my journey as an entrepreneur, I went to debt. I did lost a bunch of, you know, contact with my close friends because I was so head, head into the business. Um, and coming out of it, it was trying to it was like seeing the light. I was like, oh, my goodness. Now I can kind of start to see what's happening around me. So we talk about that with a lot with our founders. So incorporating peer to peers, masterminds um, and these kind of men mental support programs that we can because we want to make sure we're at the forefront of that and just having check ins with our founders regularly to make sure they're doing OK, not only from a business standpoint, but personally as well. And then secondly, the um, one of the bigger things is um, action. We really want to get tactical with our founders 
So a big component of each of our programs is, is being very milestone driven. So we like to implement OKRs. We like to make sure it's tactical. Not only are they progressing and having conversations with mentors and subject matter experts, but making sure that we're keeping them accountable to those tactical things they're setting. And if they're not doing it, why? There could be a lot of different factors. So we want to make sure we get to the bottom of that and make sure that we're, we're a foundational support system for them as well. Uh, David, your personal journey highlights the invaluable experience and the insights you bring to Space, empowering a new generation of entrepreneurs with practical wisdom and support. As we prepare to dive into the intricacies of the Jumpstart program with David, I invite you, our valued listeners, to think about the very essence of beginning a journey. Starting a business is much like embarking on an uncharted adventure, filled with both excitement and uncertainty. As we explore how Jumpstart aids founders in navigating these early challenges, consider the dreams and aspirations you hold. What support makes the biggest difference in your journey? Let's keep this question in mind as we uncover the pathways that programs like Jumpstart create for budding entrepreneurs. Now, let's talk about the Jumpstart program. Like mm -hmm. Among the many initiatives you oversee, uh, the Jumpstart program stands out for its targeted support to founders in the critical early stages uh, of the businesses and enterprises. How does the Jumpstart program specifically meet the unique needs of startups and founders? Yeah, Project Jumpstart is really designed in a couple of different ways. Um, it's designed to support York region entrepreneurs as well as entrepreneurs who are looking to land into York region. And a big part of that is because what we found, if we look at the landscape of incubators and accelerators and innovation centers, a lot of the services exist south of the 401 or even south of Steels, if you will. Um, and if we look at geographically north of Steels, there's not a lot. So we want to create additional support for those founders who didn't feel the need to have to get in their car, travel somewhere. Um, and the pandemic has really helped made, make a lot of that remote opportunities more visible. But we're coming out of it and people want things that are in person again. And Project Jumpstart is allowing us to utilize some of our hubs in the York region, such, such as our Yspace Markham hub, our Yspace Georgina, uh, our partnership with TreeFrog and New Market to create these physical hubs and anchors where women entrepreneurs and international entrepreneurs who are new immigrants potentially can access all the different resources that we have for them. Um, but the long view of Project Jumpstart is not to only support York region entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs in the GTA. So how can our entrepreneurs access different things throughout GTA for support? But how can GTA entrepreneurs access our hubs in York region and leverage the business opportunities that are there? So we do want to ultimately create this bridge between York region and the rest of the GTA as well. Uh, could you share an example where Jumpstart program significantly impacted a founder's trajectory? Yeah, um, I think... Project Jumpstart, we've seen it. We've had a couple pilots of it, um, and we're really going to pick up the program now coming into 2024. But a couple, some of the founders that we saw are really the early stage women entrepreneurs. So to give you the great, the best example is our Yspace Georgina Hub. We've ran that for, a, for the last three years, and we've supported over 200 different businesses. About 60% were women-led, women, women -led, and that's where we really found this need to support more women businesses. Uh, so some of the more amazing ones that we've seen is for example, um, Little Red Bake Shop. So they're a bakery that started in, in Keswick in the town of Georgina, really grew her business over the pandemic. And then throughout the pandemic, she's like, now I need a storefront. Where do I go? How do I get support? And luckily enough, we we're able to actually f help her find, find a storefront in Newmarket. So that type of story, it, it's tough because when you're, when you're kind of developing your business in Georgina or some of these more rural towns, you kind of not sure where do I go? And then when you look up information online, there's just so much you get overwhelmed. So we we're lucky in a sense to be able to support her through that journey, through what was actually our business bounce back program that we had um, that was funded by a government program and going through a four month journey with her, supporting her through that. And then she also went through our food and beverage program. So being able to kind of take her from a mom and pop kind of at home baker to now she has a storefront, she's growing her business. Um, that was really exciting to see. And we believe there's so many more businesses like that. And we're really excited to be able to support them. And David, how it feels when you work with so many founders and startups? Uh, it feels amazing. I mean, I think it's, I get the privilege of being at, at, at as a part of all their journeys. That's the biggest thing. And I think the bigger part of it is when they remember and they want to come back. It's, it's funny, like it's, 
I would say it's like they're like my children almost in a way Um, because we get to see them grow up and not only be amazing founders, amazing businesses, but just human beings. Um, So many of them are amazing in so many different ways where they want to come back and they want to be mentored. And we're fortunate enough now that we're six years in where a lot of the founders that we support in the earlier stages of, of our development have now come back and become mentors for the next round of founders. And that community and that ecosystem is something that is truly remarkable to build and be a part of. Um, and our founders have really taken the joy to not only work with us, but but really build up that ecosystem with us along the way. Um, and that's been really special. Uh, thanks for sharing those experiences uh, with me and with my audience. Now, David, like beyond individual programs, your work is uh, deeply integrated with the broader objectives of enhancing the ambitious ecosystem within the York region. Mm-hmm. What drives York region's focus on supporting the economic and enterprising development of uh, this region specifically? Yeah, I think with York region, it's um, a lot of people know the Southern Three, the Vaughan, the Richmond Hill and the Markham. But there is a Northern Six with a lot of different opportunities and and great businesses that are there that uh, we need to support. And I think it's we're starting to come up. And I think in the last six years since I joined uh, York University and Y Space and having our physical hub in Markham, we've really started to see it come to life a little bit. Um, and and a lot of the different opportunities. So for example. I'm not sure if a lot of folks know the city of Markham and the city of Vaughan are actually now um, demonstration zones as a part of um, the autonomous vehicle network that is part of OCI. And that allows technology companies that are in the mobility space to pilot with the city. And something like that is so unique and so different. Um, so I think the region has really put a lot of efforts, a lot of dollars, the municipalities and the cities have done the same thing to really elevate its profile within entrepreneurship and innovation, as well as within technology as well, to make sure that they're providing the base level support for those companies, but also creating additional opportunities that's going to draw them in and really make them want to work with the city. Um, and, and that's been really unique as well. If I speak on just the cities themselves, the nine different municipalities, they're really receptive to talking to our founders. They want to know what the needs are. They want to know what the challenges are and they implement it and they get back to our founders. That's been really special for our founders to have very hands-on experiences and conversations with the, with the municipalities to understand how they can get better integrated, how they can move forward with the municipalities. And that's been unique. Yeah. So like, uh, as you mentioned, you know, like collaboration is very, very important. Like, uh, can you share with our audience, like how does Space uh, and specifically you like engage with the local community and businesses in York region to foster a collaboration uh, and supportive environment for everyone? Yeah. So we try to work with a lot of different grassroots organizations as well. Um, You know, there's a saying that, you know, it takes everyone to build the community up um, so, and it really does. So not only including us, but there's also, I mentioned TreeFrog, who's our partner on Project Jumpstart. We also have Venture Lab, who who has the only hardware, uh, hardware catalyst initiative. So it's a hardware accelerator on Ontario. It's, I think it's one of the, the first, if not the only. Uh, we also have Seneca Helix, who is focused on, on supporting businesses. So there's a lot of these grassroots organizations that we tend to try to partner with and make sure that not only are we supporting their businesses, but they're supporting us as well Um, and then in addition to that there's a lot of um, the uh, business chambers there's a lot of board of trades that we work with as well as for the different events and then there's a lot of different trade organizations that we work with what we try to do that's a little bit unique with our physical spaces is we try to just host monthly gatherings there's no special purpose there's not a big event we do do those as well but what we call them just pizza pizza lunch fridays At the last Friday of every month, we bring together all our partners, all our mentors, all our startups together for the sole purpose of welcoming new cohorts, but then also introducing alumni and partners to the community as well. Um, And that's become a really regular staple in our community where folks know the last Friday of every month, they will show up to Space and they will have a great opportunity to connect with folks. And um, our team, what we always like to say whenever we have those, it's, hey, like, Thank you for coming out. And our ask to you is always meet two new people that you've never met before, right? Don't come in, talk to the same people again, but meet someone new, see how you can help, see how you can support them. Um, and that's worked out really well for us. And creating new relationship is very, very important for personal and as well as the business growth. Yeah. And one more question, uh, David, like, you know, is the uh, services and the support from YE space is limited to only the uh, businesses located in North uh, York region? 
Yeah. Again, I think I think that that is a lot of questions that we get. And the other one is, are we only supporting students at York? Um, so we're we're supporting really anyone. We're we're fortunate enough where we've gone different levels of government and funding where we can take our program across the country. So for us, we're really looking at businesses that are either in the early stages stages who are looking for educational programs. So we have our Founders Fundamental that runs online. We have a learning community that's asynchronous for folks. Um, and then we are also looking for folks who are looking to get into the market or scale through customer or investor capital. So we have about 20 different programs in total. Um, they're open to any business across the country. Um, you don't have to be a York student. You don't have to be local, York region, really work, working right across the country. Um, and then most recently as well, we started our startup visa program where we're now a supporting inter international company that are looking to enter the Canadian market, trying to understand, you know, the nuanced differences of the Canadian market and how do I strategically and tactically come in um, at a further advantage so that they can be successful when they come here. As you said, like you are offering uh, around 22 programs, like how can our listeners uh, learn more about these programs? Like uh, the, can you share some contact details or like next step for them to learn more about yeah. it. So if, if anyone is interested in our programs, they can go to our website, uh, yorku.com dot ca slash yspace or they can email us at yspace at yorku.ca my general thing for folks is if you're if you're looking to connect the best way is we have a program called idea consultations um, it's our way of giving back a little bit it's a free program where essentially we say fill out the short form telling us what your idea is and what you're looking to get out of the consult a, a member of our team will spend 30 minutes with you to sit down and break down the different ecosystem supports, the different resources, um, and really say, here are the next steps. And the thing that we try to make sure is that if we're not the right partner for you because of timing, because of programming, because our a lot of our program runs on different cycles, we try to make sure there's a recommendation of either things for you to do to improve on your business or things in the community that you can access. Um, and like I said, it's a give back for us because what we really want to make sure is that you're not scouring the internet, feeling lost, not sure where you go. We want to make sure you walk away from that console with a tactical plan of, okay, these are the three things I can do, or these are the three things, or sorry, three people that I can go talk to, and it's now going to make sense for me. And David, I must say this, like, you know, your efforts in York region demonstrate a powerful model of how academic institutions can significantly contribute to local economic development and entrepreneurship. Thank you for tuning into the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We are going to take a quick break to catch our breath. Stay with us and we will be right back with more insights and stories from the heart of small businesses. You dreamt big. You made the leap. You and your, we're not stopping at small, business. Doesn't matter you've never done it before. You unlock those problems. You adapt to change. You learn to evolve. You're pioneers in challenging times, finding your own frontiers. Wherever you e-commerce, UPS is with you. So nothing is going to hold you back. delivers the marketing tools your small business needs to keep up, excel, and grow. Constant Contact, helping the small stand tall. Welcome back to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. We hope you are as excited as we are to dive back into today's topic. Let's continue our journey into the inspiring world of small business, full of innovation and passion. Before we delve into the groundbreaking initiatives like ELA and Black Entrepreneurship Alliance, I'd like us to pause and reflect on the power of representation and support in shaping futures in every field, but especially in entrepreneurship. Seeing oneself in the success stories of others can be a beacon of hope and a catalyst for action. As we discuss these inclusive programs with David, Think about the roles we can play in fostering a diverse, supportive and thriving enterprise ecosystem. How can we contribute to build a world where every aspiring entrepreneur has the support they need to succeed? Now, let's talk about, you know, empowering women entrepreneurs and black entrepreneurship. Yeah. Under your leadership, 
uh, Vicepace has been pivotal in launching targeted programs like ELA and the Black Entrepreneurship Alliance, addressing the needs of underrepresented entrepreneurs. What inspired the creation of these programs and how do you uh, address uh, the specific challenges faced by women and black entrepreneurs? Yeah, um, I think part part of it was being opportunistic. I think the entrepreneur in you never dies. And I think working at York University and working as a part of Space, there was government pro funding that was coming out for those specific categories. Um, so supporting women entrepreneurs, supporting black entrepreneurs. And we felt really strongly about what we were doing, the mission that we were driving and some of the core programming that we had. And we felt we, were, we would be a great opportunity to expand our programming into some of those specific um, underserved communities. And for us, when we were able to apply, we were fortunate enough to get the first round of the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy Fund in 2019 that kick launch Ella. And then we were successful again, actually, in uh, 2022, where we got additional funding to take the program national. And then similarly, in 20, in 20 um, 2021, we got funding for our Black Entrepreneurship Program, which launched the Black Entrepreneurship Alliance. And that program is unique because it's also in partnership with the Black Creek Community Health Center. Um, so we partner with them to create this initiative. Um, and to your point of how we're addressing some of these unique challenges is we're really focused on the founders themselves and we're focused on the community. So what we always like to do whenever we're creating new programs or entering new communities is start with a consult, go in, talk to the folks who are running programming already, folks who are in those communities to better understand what their needs are before we start creating program. Um, so a great example of that for the Black Entrepreneurship Program, for example, is we are working with the Black Creek Community Health Center. We're also, we also have the TD Community Engagement Center at York University, which is entrenched in York Gate Mall at the heart of Jane and Finch. Um, so understanding those groups and having conversations with them regularly about what they think the needs are of the founders um, and the community, and then creating base off that and that being agile enough to consistently listen, improve was really important for us. Um, and then the other part of it is making sure uh, our team has training. So we wanted to make sure that our team was trained from uh, anti-racism, unconscious bias. So we do that training every year to make sure we're refreshed, um, but then also have honest conversations within our team about lived experiences and different things so the team can become more attuned in terms of what's going on in the community. Um, so that was really important for us. And all those nuances, I think, is what's helped us create re really unique and special programs for those communities is by listening and really adapting our, our needs to them and not saying, hey, we know what we're doing. We're going to come in and deliver it. But it's, we think we know. Let's listen. Let's have conversations. Let's adjust as we need to go about it. And then let's together put together a program that we felt was good. So that partnership with the Black Creek Community Health, Health Center has been amazing because they've really helped us keep in tune of what's going on in the community. Right. As you right, rightly said, David, like, you know, listening is very, very important to like, you know, launching and making any program successful. Now, can you share a success story from either ELA or the Black Entrepreneurship Alliance that illustrated the impact of these initiatives? Now you're putting me in a tough spot. There's so many. Um, I think if I had to pick one right now off the top of my head, that's a good representation of both as someone who is um, who's who's gone through both both programs who can who who's a cross sectional in terms of the, their what they identify as. Um, if I think about that, really one of one of the founders that we had uh, who's really gone through it. It she's she's really early on was um, Brittany. Um, that's one of the founders that uh, she's amazing and she's part of the reason why we started the food and beverage accelerator. So back in 2018, when we first opened, uh, we were focused on tech and she came knocking on our doors asking us, hey, why aren't you supporting food beverages, a food and beverage? How do you build a program? And we built a program um, based off some of the needs that she had. She was telling us what, we, what she needed. We were learning. We adapted. And that was kind of the foundational piece of the food and beverage program and some of the black entrepreneurship program that we had. Um, and now she's, you know, she's we've, we've supported her a little bit and then she's kind of grown. She's now, you know, in stores in the U.S., She's across. She's in over five five hundred retailers in Canada. Uh, what she essentially creates is called the brand is called O Foods. Um, it's a snack bites that is a top ten allergen free for, for it within Canada. But then she's also created a line of frosting um, that is also allergen free. So her whole thing was her growing up. She had allergies and 
being allergen free was very important but then all the snacks that were allergen free was either full of sugar weren't filling so she wanted to create her own and that was really empower empowering to kind of see someone do that um, but that that's one great example and another one i would say from our most recent cohort um, that's been really unique i think is looking at also restaurants and that's been new and different for us so one actually that's in mississauga as i was talking i just remember her um so the the restaurant's called honey soul uh, some of the best cornbread i've ever had and that might be a bold statement but truly some of the best so i recommend it um Chine there she's the founder there and she started a restaurant but her cornbread was so good people were asking for bat for, for the recipe for the batter so she actually joined a program called product feasibility to look at how do i take that batter that i have that's so unique and different and turn into product that i can now sell in stores so we worked with her and worked with her and and she's been amazing to, to see the growth and trajectory of what she's done as well um so those are two. I don't know if I can pick one, uh, but those are two, and I'm sure I could keep going. But there's been some really amazing ones that we've been able to support over the years. Um, that's really just kind of, I, I like to say, as much as we've helped them, they've helped us learn a lot as well in terms of what we could do for the community. And David, it's, it's always inspiring to hear about the success stories of different entrepreneurs from different industries. And I believe these programs underscores Space's role in creating a more inclusive and equitable ambitious ecosystem for everyone, proving that targeted support can lead to a remarkable outcomes for underrepresented founder. Now, let's, uh, like, as you mentioned, uh, one of the business from food and beverage industry, uh, The uh, let's talk about the food and beverage accelerator program. Like, it, it, I think it's a unique facet of Y space, right? Yeah. Uh, reflecting your innovative approach to sector-specific support. What motivated the, uh, the focus on the food and beverage sector and how does the accelerator program uh, cater to the unique needs of these entrepreneurs. Yeah, I always joke with people. I just like to eat, um, and that's why I started it. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality of it was just when we did a quick scan of the ecosystem across Ontario and across Canada, um, there was a lot of food and beverage SMEs, and there was a lot of businesses in that category that was not getting the necessary support they needed. Um, and you know, there's been a lot of amazing support out there, but if we look at a quick scan of the incubator accelerator ecosystem or just support ecosystem, a lot of them are very focused on tech. Um, and food and beverage is the core of our economy. There's so much going on. Uh, coming out of recessions, a lot of food businesses blossom. Um, if you go to groceries, there's tons and tons of local brands. You know, all the major retailers are looking at local initiatives. So we thought, how do we support those companies? And we had a lot of them, like I said, Brittany and Aki on the door. So we really started our food and beverage accelerator program one, responding to the needs of the founders, but two, also doing environmental scan and realizing there was no support. A lot of the support was for, hey, I have a recipe, I want to turn it into a product, and how do I do that? Great. But the support that doesn't exist that we were trying to address was, now I'm in 10, 15 stores, mom and pop stores, I need to figure out how do I get regulatory done? How do I get into mass retail? Where are the different partners I need to work with? How does the landscape work? And if I want to go beyond that into international markets, how does that work? So we really designed our program, Food and Beverage Accelerator. That's a five-month program around all those little nuances of how do I go work with co-backers? How do I work with distributors? Um, if I'm trying to get into retail, what does that look like? e-commerce, um, even fundraising. How do I fundraise as a food and beverage company? Because that's significantly different than a tech company because your multiples are different. The expectations of a food and beverage companies are different. Um, and then the biggest piece we constantly hear a lot is finances. Cash flow is a big issue because you got to pre, you got to pay your suppliers, your manufacturers in advance, but then you're, you're not getting a payment from the retailers on the back end until later on. So how do you manage all that? And it's such specific things to the industry um, that we've put into this five-month program where now we've five years in, we've supported over 93 companies um, who's generated well over $20 million in, in revenue. And we're really excited to continue that program every year, each year, year in and year out and support more underrepresented. And if I look at that program, in terms of what it resembles, we've actually had about 70% of the program be women-led businesses. Um, so and that was really unique. And about 37% of them were intersectional founders in terms of they were potentially women and black or women and a part of a visible minority group. Um, so all that was really unique. And I think 
now that we've done it, we look back and we can say, when we started it, we we're Ontario's first and only food and beverage accelerator, taking them from the mom and pops into the mass retail and the second in Canada to do it. And this year we'll be taking the program national and we're, we just closed our application. Uh, we received about 70 applications and we'll be taking on 15 companies that we're going to look to scale and grow across the nation with us. Yeah, helping 93 companies in this sector is uh, it's such a great numbers uh, david like uh, we at canadian sme team uh, wish the team of wise space the best of luck and the great job that you guys are doing to support entrepreneurs from each and every sector now before we wrap up david like uh, would you offer a piece of advice to aspiring entrepreneurs you know like yeah. uh, particularly those considering uh, embarking on the journey in today's dynamic market yeah, um, I think if, a, if I had a piece of advice for founders, sometimes it's just don't get stuck in your head too much. I find that for a lot of founders, they get stuck in their head in terms of um, what we hear a lot when we do consults. It's, it's two things I find. Um, one is my idea is special and it's my idea alone. Um, and I, what, my response to that, it, it is special. But the thing is, most of the time, an idea is an idea until you execute. Um, you know, most of the time when we hear about an idea, we've probably heard it four or five times. Someone else in the world has probably done it and either failed at it or didn't execute it right. Nothing is new under the sun. Exactly. <laughs> right. So it's that's one. It's OK. Like, let's make sure you're open having those conversations. But but then you're kind of not saying, you know, I'm so unique. Like, ha listen to feedback, listen to people. And go look for people who's done it and failed because there's a lot of learnings there. There's a lot of things you can learn from there and they probably want to have those conversations. Um, and then that leads into kind of, you know, you're just getting stuck in your own head because a lot of times they think now that they have it, it needs to be perfect when they push it out. You know, we're uh, in this whole world of lean methodology, minimum viable product. Sometimes it doesn't need to be perfect. And I heard this phrase from someone the other day, which was perfect. It's if you think it's perfect, it's too late, right? It's it's really too late when by the time it's perfect because then you're not really open to feedback. You don't want to take it because you think it's perfect. You really need to put it out when you're like, this is kind of ugly, but it'll work. That's the perfect time to put it up because now you know it works and, and people can give you the feedback. You need to make it beautiful to, to improve your, your journey, improve the process flows and all that type of stuff. But really just jump into it um, and embrace it. And then if the last thing I can, I can say is just mentoring and support is huge. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be formal mentorships, but getting engaged with the community, getting engaged with the ecosystem, having the mentors and the support system is really important um, because it's a very small ecosystem. Um, a lot of our founders that we work with or a lot of the, the folks that we talk to, we've probably known in one life or another. So once you get into the ecosystem, it opens up so many doors for you. Um, and it's never too early or too late to join. Uh, thank you so much, David, for uh, sharing your valuable advice uh, with our audience. I believe a lot of... Uh, uh, entrepreneurs who are who will be listening to our podcast will get inspired and uh, i would also like to thank you for sharing your insights and your experiences and how y space and other uh, other programs under y space is helping uh, the entrepreneurs across the nation mm -hmm. it was a great uh, pleasure hosting you today thank you so much for joining us Thank you so much. And if I can just selfishly add one plug, our technology accelerator, I know we didn't talk a lot about our technology portfolio because of the focus on the food and bev, the women entrepreneurship and black entrepreneurship. Um, but our technology accelerator that runs every summer uh, where we actually give out $30,000 in cash prizes open right now. Our applications are open until um, middle of March. So happy to, to kind of share that with the audience say if you're looking to join accelerator that's focused on supporting your technology companies where you're looking you're in market and looking now looking to scale and grow through customer investor capital uh, it's a four-month program where we're really dedicated to seeing that growth with you with mentors growth consultants and our team of advisors as well um, that's something that we would love to kind of be able to support the technology businesses in ontario and, and through canada as well for sure. We will also be adding the details in our podcast description. Thank you so much, David, for sharing all these details with our audience. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. As we conclude our insightful conversation with David Kwok, it's clear that the journey of entrepreneurship is as much about innovation and vision as it is about the community and support system that nurture these dreams into reality. 
David's journey from entrepreneur to a beacon of support for others through Yspace exemplifies the profound impact the dedicated incubation and acceleration programs can have on individual entrepreneurs and the broader system. The key takeaway from our discussion today is the vital importance of accessible, tailored support for entrepreneurs at all stages of the journey, particularly for those from underrepresented communities. Programs like Jumpstart, ELA and the Black Entrepreneurship Alliance not only provide the necessary tools and resources for success, but also create a more inclusive and diverse ambitious landscape. We extend our heartfelt thanks to David Kwok for sharing his expertise, experiences and the innovative work being done at Yspace. His contributions are a testament to the power of community-focused innovation and the positive change it can bring to the world of entrepreneurship. A special thank you also goes to our partners, including exclusive banking partner RBC, exclusive shipping partner UPS, exclusive accounting software partner Zero, and exclusive email partner Constant Contact for their ongoing support for the Canadian SME. To our valued listeners, we hope this episode has inspired you to seek out and offer support within your enterprising communities, embracing the opportunities for growth, innovation and collaboration they present. Don't forget to subscribe to Canadian SME Small Business Magazine by visiting canadiansme.ca for more engaging and informative content. Until next episode, keep pushing boundaries, stay committed to your vision. And remember, the journey of entrepreneurship is one best traveled with support and solidarity. Here's to your success today and always.